If you're looking for a really nice and fairly compact benchtop oscilloscope with good bandwidth and sampling rate at a very reasonable price, then you'll definitely want to take a much closer look at this Handtech DSO5102P. It's a dual channel digital storage oscilloscope. The DSO5102P has a bandwidth of 100 megahertz and a sampling rate of 1 giga samples per second. Included with this oscilloscope, you get two probe sets, a USB type A to type B printer cable, a unit certification card, and a power cord with plug adapter. Now I absolutely hate these type of plugs when they give you these adapters to use in North America. So what I did, I chopped it off and I added my own plug to the end of the wire. And you can see that right over here, much easier than having a bulky adapter in between the plug and your receptacle. This feature loaded oscilloscope has very high buyer satisfaction ratings. Ideal for people just getting started with electronics. They want to have a really nice oscilloscope but they do not want to spend a lot of money. Before I power up the oscilloscope to show you the different features and test it out, let's take a closer look at the oscilloscope. What I like about the scope, it's not too thick. It's only that thick right there, I'm going to show you in a minute when I turn it sideways. The weight of this unit is between four and a half and five pounds or around 2.2 kilograms. It has a very nice seven inch or 17 and three quarter centimeter display screen. On the top it's nice and flat and then you have this handle that pops up making it very easy to carry the unit. On the bottom side you can see right over here this feet that you can angle out so now when the oscilloscope is on your bench, it has a nice angle slanting backwards making it easier to view. You can see down here there's a port USB type B and with this unit you have the ability to print exactly what you see on your screen so your printer would connect right here or you can plug a thumb drive in on the front and save exactly what you're looking at to the thumb drive so you can view it on your computer. The AC input is a fairly wide range you have a frequency range between 45 and 440 hertz and for the voltage input between 100 and 240 30 watt maximum. Right here's a look at the right end and over here is a look at the opposite side. Let's power up the unit now and you can hear the cooling fan is very quiet Now this unit has a lot of different features. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the menus to show you all the different features and then I'm going to give you a few different demonstrations. I'm not going to be testing every single feature out because this video would be at least a 45 minute video. Let me connect up an oscilloscope probe right over here. Here's a better look at the probe. See it right here. You can see there's a little hole in there for adjustment. Included is this tiny screwdriver as well as these colored rings. With the unit powered up, you can see automatic, the letter A, 2 milliseconds, and over here is 100 millivolt. I'm going to connect up the probe to the BNC jack. There we go. And if I want to increase or decrease the voltage setting, right here. Five millivolt. Okay, so put it back to the 100. And over here, you could do the millisecond, the time. All right. The sensitivity of the probe tip is picking up the AC line, just being in this area with all the lighting. Right here is a menu. It would display the voltage. Over here, peak to peak, you can see 48 to 55 millivolt. Frequency is popping in and out off of this probe tip around 60 hertz. Let's get out of here for a minute. Over here, you can turn on both channels. This is channel 1 that's already active. Channel 2. 
you can see now there's a blue line overlaying the yellow. Over here something very useful in the event that you think that the probe tip is not working properly you can verify it. This is roughly 5 volts peak to peak and it has a 1 kilohertz output so if we connect this it goes to the ground and this one here is on times 1 connect this up push the auto button right over here you can see 1 kilohertz 5.2 volts peak to peak mean 2.48 frequency is the 1 kilohertz and over here is the period that's one cycle of the waveform it is one millisecond. Now you can do a single cycle by pushing right over here. Now you have just a single cycle. If you want to look at the rising edge, you can switch to that one there. Now we're looking at only the rising edge of the waveform. Exit out over here. Now I could also go over here and click single sequence. exit out of here. Alright, so we know the probe tip is working good. Disconnect this. Now I'm going to connect up my signal generator and we'll take a look at the rest of the features. Alright, I have my dual channel arbitrary function signal generator positioned just below this bench. It's the one I showed you in a product review a while back. If you haven't seen that video, there'll be a link at the end of this video. Let me turn it on. Okay, 10 kilohertz at 10 volts is the setting, and 10.03, 10.8, and I can switch to a different wave if desired, square wave, and then we have a triangle wave, let's go back to the sine wave, if I want I can go over here, Take a closer look. Let me go over here. And if I want, I can just push auto. It will choose the best setting. Over here, single cycle. And now I hit this to exit out. And you have just a single cycle. Menu back on. Let's go back to multi. Exit out. Let's go over to measure. Right here at this screen you can see all the different measurements being taken and this is only a very small number of the measurements that you can actually take. So if I push this button right over here we have channel 1 and channel 2. Channel 2 is not in use but if I rotate this you can see over here all the different things that you can choose from. And I'm going to go down the list just to show you how many different things that this oscilloscope can measure? Overshoot, pre-shoot. All right, and back to the top. And I can exit out over here. So if I wanted to have, let's take, hmm, let's go over here to, let's go all the way down. Let's say I wanted this. V amp, I would push the button, and now you can see V amp right there. So you could choose whatever you want for each one of these positions. You would just move this along to the spot you want, push the button, and then you select exactly what you want in that spot. So let me exit out of here, push that another screen. There it is. Now you can see everything displayed in this window, which is very nice. Now if I want, I can push over here, cursor, and I can choose something I want to measure between the two lines. So let's do, let's just do time peak to peak. And I'm going to go over to select cursor, F4. That's moving both, or I can push the button. F4 again. Now I'm only on the S, so I can go the peak of this wave. 
right there. And then I could push this button again. Now we're on the next one. And I can move it this way. And you can see over here the frequency changing. So I put it at that peak right there, should be around 10. See? 10. And you can do the same thing with the voltage, top and bottom of the waveform. Let me exit out of here. Let's push the display button. Now the display button, you can choose vectors or dots. All right. Persistency settings, DSO mode. You have two different types. Contrast. Push that there. And of course, you can adjust it with this knob. Keep it around 11. That's fine. Over here, you can push the mode. Next page. Here's the grid. You have a dotted line, real, off. Grid intensity settings. You can adjust the refresh rate, wave intensity. And that is it for that section. Now let's go to utility. We go into all the different settings right here. System information. Firmware update. You can do it very easily. It tells you how to do it right here. The really good thing about this unit, if there's any of these settings that you don't know how to use, all you have to do is push the help button. When you push the help button in that area you're at, it's going to tell you all about it. This one here, save waveform. If your printer is connected, you'll be able to print this all out. Self calibration mode. Let's go on to the next page. Keypad beeping on and off. So now it's off. You have many different languages to choose from English. I'm going to go through the list. Just keep pushing the button. French. Looks like maybe Russian. German. Spanish. No idea. <laughs> Portuguese. And back to English. You can change the graphical user interface. See it black, green, pink. I prefer blue. Time. Set the date and time for the unit. System status. Over here. Let's go on to the next page. Pass and fail. Now there's a recorder. Push this button right here. And you can record certain frames. And you specify how many. You push this right here. And you can specify up to 20. And then you would push save. And over here it says insert your USB device first. So you would plug in your USB thumb drive. One like you see right here. Plug it in. And then you'll be able to save the waveform to the flash drive. And then you'll be able to look at it on your computer. An extremely useful feature to have. Also has a recall feature and then you can delete things. Let's go over to here. Let's take a look at Acquire. Over here you can choose between real time and equivalent time sampling. You have different modes, normal, peak or average. Down here shows maximum depth, 4K, 20K or 40K. So let's go back there. Save and recall. You can do setup. You can choose local memory. The memory in this unit is very small, I think around 40K. There's also a shortcut button right over here, save to USB. Vertical position can be adjusted right over here. And horizontal position with this knob. I now have two channels connected up to the oscilloscope and you're going to see both in just a minute. But there is another menu I wanted to show you. It's right over here. If you push that once, here you can choose DC coupling, AC ground, 20 megahertz bandwidth, it says limit on, limit off. This is very useful if you're going to be checking the ripple on power supplies. You would put this to limit on. Over here is volts per division, coarse and fine adjustments. Here you can set the probe to match, so one time, ten time, one hundred or a thousand, and here you can do invert. Let's put this back over here actually, and let's turn on the other one. Let's go to auto. Auto should set it all up now. There we go. And just exit out. Here you have both waveforms now. Over here is a math menu. Push that button, and here you can choose 
waveform of channel 1 plus channel 2, channel 1 minus channel 2, channel 2 minus channel 1, channel 1 times channel 2, or channel 1 divided by channel 2, and there's other settings here as well. For the money, you cannot beat the number of features that this unit has. Exit out, turn that off, and exit out. Over here is another menu, horizontal, you can choose major or minor window. Now this over here, the marks, is not going to work in this mode, I believe. You need to be in the YT mode. Let me see something here, let me just push on it. Yeah, control is active only in dual window YT mode. Set clear, clear all, let's go to page two. Over here, hold off, play stop, course fine, and you have other settings as well. So there's plenty of different settings. Before I remove the back cover to show you what the inside of this oscilloscope looks like, let me just show you over here for the triggering. You can see external trigger. Click on trigger menu. And you can see over here you can have a trigger a number of different ways. Slope, pulse, rising or falling edge. Here you have the source. So over here you have an external trigger which would be EXT. That's how you choose your rising or falling. If I change the setting here, it's going to give you different choices. You can see going all the way down the line. So video. All right. So if I go to pulse, positive and negative, you can choose that way. There's your slope. And over here it says use VO knob to adjust time for overtime trigger. And then you have over here, use the VO knob to adjust trigger level for channel 1, channel 2. So let's get out of here, exit out. For the reasonable price of this unit, you cannot beat it for all the features it has. All right, let me open up the back cover, show you the inside very quick. You have this board. This is your switch mode power supply connected to your AC mains. Over here, you have different voltage outputs going all the way down the left side, connection for your fan, and each one of these cables leads into this box right here which is shielded with another circuit board. The purpose of all the shielding is to prevent external interference when using the oscilloscope. You'll have much more accurate readings. And guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.